Let me introduce you first. Um, Karen was a software engineer, a computer science teacher, a board member of the Computer Science Teachers Association, an education manager for the MIT App Inventor. And Salim was a longtime mathematics teacher, a curriculum designer, an app inventor. They both currently work for the MIT App Inventor, which boasts over, is this right, a million users a month? Welcome. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Good to be here. That is incredible. That is incredible. Well, first, this is such a cool book. I loved it. My son, who's 17, has already said, hey, dad, I want that book when you're done. So he's already claimed it to let you know it is out of my possession after we're done today. <laughs> <laughs> Can you first tell us a little bit about the MIT uh, Computer Science and Artificial Laboratory, Intelligence Laboratory and the MIT App Inventor? Sure, I can start. Um, so this, uh, the CCL, as it's um, more affectionately known, is just the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory at MIT. Uh, it's a very large group with many smaller groups within it. <clears throat> and both Salim and I work for um, the App Inventor Group, which is led by Hal Abelson, uh, a professor at MIT. Um, and we worked... Uh, with developers who work on the platform, develop the software that allows kids to learn how to code very easily. Uh, both Salim and I worked on the education part of things, so doing things like writing books and writing curriculum and uh, tutorials to help kids learn how to code with App Inventor. Uh, if I could just add to that, so, so even though our project is relatively new, maybe a little bit older than a decade, uh, the tradition in MIT uh, goes way back uh, to Seymour Papert, who was sort of the father of constructionism, uh, sort of creating things, doing things, and learning uh, that way. And they were also uh, the first ones to introduce Logo. Uh, and, and you might also know that uh, Scratch is another uh, uh, you know, product of the MIT uh, Media Lab. So uh, we are delighted to be here uh, with you. How did you two get started coding? Was this something that started at MIT or did it start well before that? Do you want to well, I'll start. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually started a long time ago, back when there were even punch cards. So you had to type your code in, you'd have punch cards. So um, yeah, I came out of college. I was an, actually an art major and I, uh, couldn't really get a job in art and uh, lucked into a job. Uh, and I didn't know anything about coding at that point and learned how to code. Um, and then very soon after that, I decided, you know what, I think I'd rather be a teacher. So I just continued. And uh, as you go through, you, you know, once you're a programmer, you'll know that you have to know a lot of different languages. So once you know the basics, uh, you can learn and pick up most, most any language. Uh, my background uh, growing up in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, is mathematics. And, and when I was growing up, it was almost scorned upon, uh, you know, to, to, to have folks doing computers. I mean, we were so proud to be able to do a lot of things mentally. I went through entire college uh, period like that. Uh, and I became a teacher of mathematics. And then when I was about 32, uh, I was fascinated by a mathematical problem called the eight queens puzzle. You might have heard about that. It's about basically putting eight queens on a board, on a chessboard, so that none of them can kill each other. Huh. So I worked for that, a very hard problem to solve. And then to be able to solve that, I learned programming. And what happened is uh, my favorite mathematician, Carl Gauss, uh, could only do so many of them, maybe 80 of them. So when I learned how to do the programming for that, I was able to get 92 of them, all of them. And I remember the moment I was able to get something even Gauss didn't get. And it just totally opened my mind. Like, wow, this is something that I really should uh, look into. And I went to uh, study uh, at the master's level. So that's how I got hooked on and MIT came much later. Wow, wow. Well, I will say this, your book, even for less tech savvy people like me, it's really awesome. It, it is so well written. It's so clear. Like I, I started doing it last night. Like I can do this myself. How did you guys get the idea for the book and like the format and the tone and the structure, how you put this together? 
Uh, so the book itself um, is based upon a curriculum we wrote a few years back. Uh, we worked with a group in Hong Kong, bringing uh, coding to fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. So it was a three-year curriculum, and we developed several apps along with, um, you know, worksheets to help students learn how to make these apps. And then we decided, let's... Um, take the, some of these apps that are, um, you know, that we think are interesting for young people and turn it into book form so that we can reach more people than, than just the kids in Hong Kong. So we picked out some of the kind of more, um, we think, fun apps to make. Uh, and then we also included a few apps from our youth radio uh, mm -hmm. project, which uh, works with um, youth Radio out of Oakland, California, and um, picked out a few of theirs as well that we think would be interesting for young people to make. Um, the, the format, I think we have to attribute that to the, the illustrators um, from Candlewick. They did an amazing job. Uh, we gave them kind of our screenshots of, of what the code will look like, um, but they did the magic of making it um, really, I think, shine and make it easy for kids to, to pick up and learn how to make an app. Uh, if I could just add uh, something. So, so we had this very constructionist book, you know, we, you could basically build things, exciting things, but we also uh, wanted to, and it, it sort of started like I, one day I was just, I almost had a, like a daydream. I, I imagined the finished book and somebody was reading it and they were really fascinated. So when I look what they're reading, I actually saw stories in there. Mm -hmm. I saw stories that uh, from all over the world, young inventors, and how you know they got hooked on coding and how they were able to create something that ultimately became uh, useful to uh, you know their communities. Mm -hmm. So so that thought uh, said you know let's let's pull these uh, folks that we already know from all over the world and we we came up with uh, six stories at the end of every chapter. So together I feel uh, they create a very nice organic. You know you build a little bit, you read a little bit, build a little bit more, uh, and then sort of open ended you could create your own. Uh, Apps. Well, Slim, that, that leads to my next question, which is this. I love the storytelling aspect of this. You guys really presented how some young people created some amazing apps, and you tell their story. Of the ones that you presented, like, what are some of your favorites that when they, when they, when those young people gave you these apps and showed you this, you were amazed by them? What were your favorites? I'll, I'll tell quickly. My, my favorite is called Hello Navi where a bunch of girls, uh, I believe in Texas, if I'm not mistaken, they had a blind classmate and he was having a very difficult time navigating the buildings. And they, you know, they figured out how to create an app that will take uh, the student and, you know, allow the student to go through these, you know, hallways and find classes. So that's the one that has a really special place in my heart. And then they eventually met Obama. That also is a fascinating story. Uh, what's your favorite, Karen? Um, well, I, I want to say like these, probably these six are our favorites that we, we decided to put into the book, uh, cause there's so many stories of young people and the great stuff they're making. Um, probably mine would be Chinmai who's from India and, uh, she made, uh, an app to help flood victims after, um, people in her area, Chennai were, were affected by that. So she went and did that. And then I actually got to meet her because she, she came to, uh, each year, Avon Bennett has a, a summit at MIT, and she was 10, 10, 11 years old at the time, and she came and she just wowed everyone. At that point, she made a whole um, app that uh, measured how much water you were using, and um, if you had a leaky faucet or something, how much water was being wasted. So uh, she, she blew away the whole crowd at, at 10 or 11 years old, what she was able to do with Avon Bennett. That's what I loved about your book, because I think it's so easy for us as adults to, you know, wave the phone around and say, oh, you know, they're wasting all their time. And what you clearly showed is these young people are brilliant. They're problem solvers. They are trying to change the world in ways that really needs to, to, to be addressed. And I'm curious, Karen, you mentioned there were lots of stories that maybe didn't make the book. Are we thinking about a sequel? Are we going to extend this further? Are there more stories that need to be told? Do I need to to go to to, to the you know to to buy another book quickly? <laughs> uh, we don't have any immediate plans, but certainly I know um, 
the App Inventor team is working currently to to really highlight some people. I just was watching some videos yesterday of of recent uh, winners of an Appathon that that App Inventor holds every year. Uh, so so we continue to be inspired by these young people. It is amazing if you if you give them the tools uh, to be creative, they just can just really just go to town. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know that so many in our audience want to know how they can get a career in STEM, how they can become scientists and inventors and, and do exactly what you're saying, Karen, which is, you know, change the world. I'm sure they have to look at this and say, you know, something's got to be done about these issues. What advice do you guys have for, you know, young minds who want to be scientists and inventors and, you know, just change the world? Do you want me to start, yeah, Celine? Yeah, Aaron, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so um, my my advice is to get involved in um, different programs. So I'm actually right now uh, developing curriculum for Technovation, which is a program for girls, um, and they make mobile apps to solve a problem in their community. As well, App Inventor has uh, monthly challenges. Uh, they have appathons every year. So I would say for for young people that are interested you know, get involved in some of these programs and you'll learn how to code, you know, everywhere on the internet, you can look, there's all sorts of ways to learn how to code and to teach yourself. But I think getting involved in programs where you're working with other, other young people, you can work in teams um, and you can see what they're doing and learn from each other. Uh, that's the way to go. But, but definitely don't be afraid to try things um, and, you know, just say, Oh, I don't know how to code. Uh, you know, I'm too young to code. Uh, anyone can code, and especially with a tool like App Inventor, which is so easy to pick up, um, then you know you can just see what amazing things young people can do. Um, my 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 thought here is sort of inviting people to fall in love with difficult problems. Like like mm -hmm. everything I've done in life, I, I never said, "Oh, let me study computer science." It was always like even in that example I gave. There was some problem that fascinated me, and and somehow I felt that you know it could be solved. I just don't know how. And as you start, uh, you know, you know, continuing exploring, all these things come to you. If you need to learn a computer language, you will. If you need to learn a little bit history about this, you know, the process, you will. If you need to meet other departments, other people, you will. So I, my, my, my advice would be sort of like look at the bigger picture and see what fascinates you and have faith that uh, they may look insurmountable, but they are actually uh, eventually we're going to figure things out and, and all of the, the rest will come to you, I think, uh, you know, easily and naturally. I think that's beautifully stated. Thank Karen Slim, thank you so very, very much. That was wonderful. Everyone needs to pick up this book and start coding now. I can't wait to see how they change the world. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.